The Spotify algorithm is made up of three main parts. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through each one of them. The first is collaborative filtering. The second is audio analysis. And the third is web crawling. So let's start right off the bat with collaborative filtering, which sounds very scary, overwhelming, very strange, but it's actually a concept that's fairly easy to understand. And a lot of different social media platforms use it or something very much like it. Whereas if you understand collaborative filtering, you kind of know how every online platform that uses an algorithm will filter your data to figure out who to recommend music to. So what is collaborative filtering? Imagine if you have a friend and they really like Ed Sheeran, for example, and maybe they also like Justin Bieber. So when you're trying to think of what kind of artist to recommend them, let's say you also like Ed Sheeran and Justin Bieber, but you also like Shawn Mendes. So they like two out of the three things that you like, and you have this third thing that you like that they've never heard of. So what you do is you say, hey, friend, go check out this Sean Mendez guy. Maybe you'll like it. And they probably will because they like those two other things. Think about a little bigger. If you have 100 people that like Tool and 10 of them also really like a perfect circle, but they've never, but the other 90 have never heard of a perfect circle. There's a good chance that those other 90 are going to like a perfect circle because they have the same singer as Tool and there's the same kind of general vibe of music. So that's how it works. And if you don't know those artists, just use whatever artists you imagine. Basically, these people like this, this subset of those people like that. There's a good chance the rest of these people will like that because they have a lot in common. And that's really what collaborative filtering is all about. TikTok operates on a similar methodology and Instagram, really every online platform now where they're looking at all the things that you're interacting with, what you like, what you save, what you share, what you add to a playlist, what you listen all the way through, what you skip. And it's looking at everyone doing all those actions for Spotify for every song and just trying to match those connections along the way. So their end game is to get you to spend as much time on Spotify as possible, because that means you're probably enjoying your time on Spotify to the maximum extent. So the more accurate recommendations they can give you, the more time you're going to spend, the more likely you are to spend money and keep your subscription with Spotify. So that's the first part, collaborative filtering. And I would argue that's probably the most important aspect to understand. And it's also why bots are a horrible idea. Because if you have a bunch of fake people going to your account, they're not interacting with your stuff and they're going to be recommending bogus stuff because those bots aren't real people, so they don't have real taste. They're just being programmed to like all sorts of crap on the internet. Similarly, it also makes no sense to have a bunch of people who don't like your genre of music listen to your music. So this is one reason why playlisting can be kind of detrimental. If you're put on a playlist that just gets you a bunch of fluff and it's not accurate, it can actually hurt Spotify's understanding of who likes your music and who doesn't. So the second aspect of this is audio analysis. And what audio analysis does is it, every song that gets uploaded to Spotify, Spotify basically figures out what the song is, what the key is, what the tempo is, what elements. And I'm just gonna show you this because you can actually look this up yourself. Here I'm using a site called Music Stacks with an X because they're edgy. <laughs> it is a very good site for uh, if you're trying to figure out the popularity index of your song, which check out this video to learn more stuff about that. But they also added a new feature that I haven't talked about yet where you can actually graph your popularity index. I don't really remember how to do it, but there's a way somewhere over here, there's a way you can like look at numbers over time, which is pretty cool. Um, so check that out if, you, if you're, you know, you, you want to learn more about that. But here I am on Ed Sheeran, Thinking Out Loud. I'm thinking about how. In here, you can see there's the tempo, 79 BPM, D major. This is the loudness of the track. It has the length. But if we scroll down a little bit more, we have danceability. We have energy, positiveness. And I picked this song because it's a song that pretty much everyone knows. <laughs> it's got like a billion streams, but it's 0% instrumental, which makes sense. It's mostly vocals. The liveness score is, is it like a live studio audience or is it, recorded. Anything over 80 means it's probably live. This is an 18, so it's probably a studio. Is it mostly talking or singing? What is the energy like? Is it a positive song or a negative song? And how danceable? Apparently this one's very danceable, which I guess makes sense because a lot of people use this as like a wedding song, unless I'm mixing it up with one of his other tracks. Um, I saw Ed Sheeran live a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> so um, that's one reason why um, I'm, this is top of mind for me. But this is what Spotify does for every song. You can look up any song you have um, or by anyone else and figure out exactly what Spotify sees your song as. And apparently they use this data to impact where they put your song in playlists and what order, because there's kind of a science behind how DJs rank your music and playlists, like what songs can be before and after it. But also if they, if like Taylor Swift drops a song and there's no collaborative filtering data, 
they know that that Taylor Swift song is going to be super hot, but they don't necessarily know where it fits in the playlist and who likes it yet. So they might initially use the audio analysis more heavily before they get that collaborative filtering data. So before we talk about web crawling, I just want to mention that if you want to learn even more about this, I just released a book called Spotify Algorithms. You can get it linked below. It's available on Amazon, uh, ebook, audiobook, also on Spotify and Audible, and also a paperback book. Uh, it's 50 pages, short and sweet, right to the point, no fluff. Um, so hopefully you dig it. I priced it as affordably as I could on Amazon. So pick up a copy, leave a review, appreciate a ton. This book kind of covers the the why of interpreting like Spotify algorithmic stuff and, and Spotify algorithmic playlists. And then my core Spotify growth machine is kind of like the how do you promote your music to start getting enough people for that collaborative filtering to take place. So that's kind of how it fits into my overall ecosystem of things. <laughs> but anyways, let's talk about web crawling. So web crawling is just what Google does to crawl the internet and link pages together and come up with ways that like when you search for something, they can deliver your results. Spotify also crawls the web and looks at, I don't remember if it was hundreds of thousands or millions of different websites to see what artists are being talked about together, what artists are touring together, what artists are getting talked about more and more over time, what artists are taking off on social media. So Spotify doesn't only look at data that happens on Spotify. They're looking at, they're trying to get a vision of like which artists are popping where, how they're associated, not just on the platform, but like globally across the whole internet because like if spotify can find what songs are kind of bubbling up to the surface and gaining popularity on tiktok for example or on very key music blogs where tastemakers are very often right about what songs are going to pop off then they can push that song to people before it's actually a hit so people are discovering it on spotify instead of discovering it somewhere else like if you find your favorite music from spotify you're probably going to associate them with being a platform that you discover music with, which generally is going to be a good thing. If you want to learn how you can promote your music on Spotify, you can check out this playlist that I made here for you. But if you prefer a much more organized course, that guy's right in the corner, has access to my country list and a community to ask questions. And again, my book is in the description if you want to check that guy out and learn even more information about the Spotify algorithm. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next video. Bye.